Hi, my name is Rob Wexler and I'm a postdoc with Professor Emily Carter at Princeton University. In this lightning talk, I'll be presenting my recent work on the computational design of kestorite solar cells via ion substitution, which was done in collaboration with Professor Carter and Dr. Gopalakrishnan Sai Gautam. Before beginning, I'd just like to thank the Department of Energy for funding this research and Princeton Research Computing for computational support. Since the invention of the first practical solar cell in 1954, there's been a number of materials developed for sunlight absorption, including silicon, cadmium, indium, gallium diselenide, or SIGs for short, cadmium telluride, and more recently, the hybrid organic inorganic halide perovskites. These materials, however, aren't without their limitations. For example, silicon requires expensive high temperature processing, indium is rare, cadmium is toxic, and the hybrid perovskites are unstable, especially in human environments. For these reasons, kestorite solar cells, based on dicopper zinc tin tetrasulfide, or CCTS, are promising because they're cheap to make, made from abundant and non-toxic elements, and stable. Unfortunately, though, their efficiencies are rather low and haven't changed since 2013, and this is largely believed to be due to the formation of defects, where, for example, I've shown here the formation of the copper on zinc, zinc on copper antisite cluster, which has been shown to induce band gap fluctuations that reduce the open circuit voltage. The goal of this work is to identify some promising ion substitution strategies for improving the efficiency of CZTS with the following constraints. First, that any strategy should suppress carrier recombination centers, where here we focus on the two copper on zinc, tin on zinc antisite cluster, which generates deep electron traps. And second, that it should optimize the band gap in accordance with the shockley quasar limit. In terms of new ions to introduce, the periodic table offers a rich palette of possibilities. Where on the right, we've eliminated those that are radioactive, rare, redox active, or possess the wrong size or oxidation state. And this left us with a few sensible candidates, that being magnesium and cadmium on the zinc site, silicon and germanium on the tin site, and selenium on the sulfur site. This slide shows a schematic roadmap through kestroid design space, where the vertical axis corresponds to the band gap, the center of it being the optimal shockley quasar band gap, and the concentration of carrier recombination centers decreases from left to right. Starting from CZTS, we first find that complete magnesium substitution increases the concentration of carrier recombination centers, whereas complete silicon substitution decreases their concentration substantially, but gives too high a band gap. Next, we look at germanium substitution and find that while complete substitution suppresses the formation of carrier recombination centers, as shown here by the plot on the bottom left, germanium, like silicon, increases the band gap from approximately 1.5 to 2.1 electron volts, but this time the increase is small enough to be dealt with via selenization. And while partial selenization can restore the band gap to its optimal value, it also promotes the formation of carrier recombination centers. For that reason, we explored the use of cadmium, which, while being toxic, has also been shown to reduce the band gap, which would then limit the extent to which selenization is necessary. And we find that this is exactly the case, where in addition to reducing the amount of selenium necessary to optimize the band gap, complete cadmium substitution remarkably suppresses the formation of carrier recombination centers, and therefore should substantially improve the efficiency of kestorite solar cells.